I feel like I want to start with a shout out. Okay, so our August book is going to be We Are the Brent by Tracy Lang, who is Jake's aunt. And this book is getting like huge acclaim. It was a book of a month, book of the month choice this month. It's like on a bunch of lists. It's like going crazy. It's her first book. Yeah. We're gonna read it and she's gonna oh. do it. Wasn't that wow. a good read? Yes, they've been having yeah, good reads, giveaways for it. Yeah, it's published by Celadon and it's getting like tons of press. And this is an arc. I haven't read it yet. I was going to kind of wait and read it with you guys. Is it about Jake? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't read it. <laughs> it could be. No, I think it's about a large Irish Catholic family, but it doesn't technically come out until August. So we're going to pick it for August. Um, so everybody can get a copy. But I, try, I usually don't pick like new books for us because they can be hard to find and the library doesn't always have them but I'm making an exception because we know her she lives in um Bend Oregon this is kind of her second career she's like semi-retired and she took this MFA writing class and came out of it with this novel like this program and um then she sold it it's an incredible success story it's extremely inspiring because she's like in her 50s like second career and yeah, I think it's very cool. And the book is getting really good reviews. It has like a 4.5 on Goodreads, which is now it's very good. Um, okay, well, let's talk. Who listened on audiobook? Anything um, to note about the experience? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> the accent that she was doing, okay. There was like a part in the beginning where they're describing Aiden and she's like doing whatever the accent is supposed to be and then the next line was like oh he had a like hot low gravelly voice and I was like that's not what you did for it and so it was kind of hard to like I'm sure if I was reading it I would have like read his stuff a little sexier but a woman doing a fake like Long Island accent is yeah hard. it was that was miserable she tried agree Did it kind of take you out of the story? No, but I, I just, he probably would have been sexier if I was reading it in my mind. Wait, yeah, and a lot of audiobooks like do a, like a man and a woman, and it was yeah. definitely like a lot of different, you yeah. know, like in quotes things. So it was kind of hard for me to keep I, track of Yeah, it. especially also with the way this went back and forth, I think it really could have benefited from having a, a man also narrating. Agreed. Because it, like, I feel like compared to some of the other books, she didn't change her octave that much when she was doing the guy that you had to, like, kind of pay attention to make sure you realized you were, like, switching uh, narrative. Right. Like, him versus the sister almost was, yeah. like, the same Yes, the imitation. sister and Aiden were very similar <laughs> points. Yeah. She made the sister seem like some kind of, like, truck driver. Yeah. It was like, hey. Stay away from her. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that wasn't, I mean, I think the sister was supposed to be more like, you know, like blue collar. Yeah. So that's maybe a well, little Well, success there. <laughs> yeah. Also, did anyone else, this is morbid, but she kept going, the sister kept going to Florida in the books to like check on her rental properties. And I kept thinking about the building collapse. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> Sorry. I was just no, like, like, like she's reading that one. Like, oh. I have a question. People people I've, I've never listened to an audiobook, so I don't know how it how works. You never have. No, but I'm wondering if, like, a suspenseful book like this, do they, does she, like, read it faster and, you know, try the one when, when it's a uh, exciting part? Or if, what, what's, like, the pace of the reading, like, for a, a thriller like this? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. She came in the door, the window smashed, you know, like that kind of thing. Like yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think that can kind of add to it. Agreed. I felt like it, it built to a mm -hmm. climax sometime. Mm -hmm. Unless you uh, are kind of running out of time and you put it on like 1.4 speed. and then I was just going to say that. <laughs> and, then it, and then you really get going. <laughs> Question. We can do thumbs up or thumbs down. Did you like the book? One, two, three. Okay, okay, we've got mostly ups. Carrie's side 
sideways. Nick and Chelsea are down. All right, we'll start with Sorry, Nick. I'm sideways too. Emily, you're sideways too? Yeah. Okay. So Nick and Chelsea, why not? Nick, you oh, two are- Wait, I was, I was doing this. Oh, you're in the middle? Okay, Nick, yeah. Chelsea, so you're down. Well, this was no court of thorns and roses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I read it really quickly because it's kind of a fast read. You know, there's like constant action. Something's always happening. So yeah. it's kind of fun in that way. But there were so many things they did that I just found really frustrating and unbelievable. I know it's a novel and it's you have to kind of suspend your disbelief. But there are a lot of things that just didn't make sense in the plot. And yeah. um the kind of unreliable narr narrator thing was like a little bit weird. I didn't know who to trust. And then yeah. the main character, whose name I forget already, um, Car Car Carol Caroline. 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 Um, she just dropped out of the book altogether. Like, okay, where yeah. does she go? I don't know. I thought I kind of wanted to. I kind of liked that his perspective, her perspective, and the back and forth. And then at the end, it was just like all Aiden for the last hundred pages. And I kind of wanted to know like what she was thinking. That's um, right. I'm glad it's because she disappeared. She just disappeared. Well, yeah, like she physically disappeared, but she also just disappeared from like, her her side, telling her side of the story. Um. So that those are kind of my thoughts on this. Yeah, we should definitely talk more about that. Her disappearing. That's a really good point. Um, Chelsea and Emily, you guys were sideways. Um, I um I liked the the thought of the book and like the whole thing was cool to me. Um, like I wanted it to be this like epic thing. And I was pretty, I was okay through most of it, but felt like the first half of the book did such a good job building like the, the plot and building the background of the characters. And then like the second half of the book, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And then just like this end. And you're like, wait a minute. I just felt like it was like rushed towards the end and they didn't have like a full, I wish they wouldn't have spent so much time in the beginning and then rushed to the end. I think it, they would have made it a lot better. When did this book come out? Was it after Gone Girl? Yeah, uh, it was only out like last year. I feel yeah. like there's a whole cluster of books that were like trying to be Gone Girl and they're always leaving us like a little disappointed because they, they don't quite do it as well and they have a good premise and then they don't quite pull off that twist to that second part the way exactly that did. you get one for me i think there was even like um a quote from jillian flynn on the back of this book and she said i forget what she said exactly but i yeah i also drew that connection like it's trying to be like gone girl yeah yeah i feel like a lot of books try to be gone girl because it's popular None of them really yeah and I think it's hard to like unravel a, a psychological or like a thriller like that really well but I did think that the build-up was like pretty good and I definitely was surprised like at one turning point I can't even remember which one but I definitely was like oh I'm impressed because I didn't think that's how it was gonna go but then everything else moving forward was like kind of what I had predicted and the way that it was like red wasn't like a groundbreaking thing it was like okay that's what I figured okay so you kind of saw the ending coming Emily kind of yes but I mean not from like the first probably like 60 percent of the book I didn't see it coming but from there forward it it that's when I kind of was like okay it's gonna be the husband like he the husband didn't die because like they started dropping it so many times that they hadn't found his body and I was like okay hey, chill like we don't need to hear it 12 times in a row like we get it yeah <laughs> Hitting you over the head with it. Okay, cool. Carrie, anything you want to add to that for being sideways? Um, yeah, I agree with what everyone said. I also felt there was just so much potential, like especially in the beginning when there are the two different um, points of views. At first I was like, this is kind of weird. But then I was like, oh, this can be really good. Like if it becomes like this psychological thing. And I feel like there was so much that could have been developed that wasn't. And then I also just found... Um, the character of Aiden to be just like extremely problematic it was like he's kind of a tough guy with a past but then he's like so oblivious and naive and dumb I was like <laughs> I don't know I just found him hard to believe as a character and I could spot like a mile away that he actually didn't do it um so yeah there were parts that seemed really obvious and I kind of wanted things to be more um making me think about it sure okay 
I feel like she was trying really hard to make it seem like he was a bad boy. And there was this quote kind of in the beginning where he was talking about her and he was like, her fingernails were painted the color of blood. And I was like, no one would think that. Or red? Yeah. No? Red. He's a murderer. And then he just falls in love so fast. And it's like, okay, I get like he hasn't, like if it took that little to fall in love that fast, like either Caroline was like crazy out of this world, which I know the book tried to make her be, but I was like, wouldn't he have had like other experiences by now? I, I don't know. He might have just had one bad experience. I yeah. Just- I feel like in New-, in New York, I had a couple weird experiences with guys who are obsessive compulsive, like stalker people who clearly it has nothing to do with the woman. Like it's their own obsession. But I was wondering, like, why has it been so long since he had this obsession? Like, I feel like that character has obsessions all the time with women. I know he was in prison, but like, yeah, I thought it was, I, I thought it was weird. I was like, oh, okay. Like, now you're doing this again. He and you're done it before. Yeah. No, no, it like, well, he was so obsessed with Samantha and then, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but the Donnie stuff is weird. Oh yeah. Yeah. The daughter stuff was really weird. All right, you guys tell me why you liked it. <laughs> so much silence. I just said, is that us? I was like, <laughs> I don't know who else liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. We liked, I liked it. it. Oh, you said yes. Yeah. I liked it. It was an easy read. It went by fast. It, yeah. It really the plot really gripped you. <laughs> um yeah. And the house sounded awesome. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it took swept me away to the Hamptons, um, which I've never been to, but I could picture it. I'm not and really sure what it, where is that? Oh, like each New York City. Long Island, yeah. Like if you live in New York City, you can yeah, live like a beach person. Is it north? It's on Long Island. But you can drive to yes. Yeah. Or you can it's take like two hours from JFK. Mm-hmm. Take the chitney. It took Caroline like three hours that night. Yeah, because of the storm. Hmm. Um, I agree with you, Maggie. I thought it was um it really held my attention i don't disagree with anything anyone said like lots of plot holes like really questionable characters you know? definitely lots the plot holes but i thought it was really fun and i was pretty into it and i thought i i actually really liked the competing narration because i liked trying to find the discrepancies and once those started happening it got really kind of fun i thought um but yeah i mean was the best book i've ever read certainly not but i i enjoyed reading I thought it was fun. No, I forgot who just said uh, the part about, uh, oh, how they couldn't find the body. Some of the writing wasn't like the best writing I've ever seen. Like in, when it was still two personalities and they were trying to make him seem like he was obsessed with her. I was like, okay, we get it. He's a psycho. But then I was like, okay, actually maybe it's too much. Like she's trying too hard to paint him as like somebody that's obsessed with her because then, then there's a whole- like when he hit his head on her dashboard oh yeah was i was so like weird. okay that's it like she would never see this guy again like that's yeah crazy. and so yeah. i had a degree like they went too far too fast well that's the thing i i kept getting i just felt like all of the characters were unlikable including like her daughter like yeah. i just thought all all of the characters the were unlikable and so yeah. it's like you couldn't you didn't want to root for anybody and not to keep comparing it, but like in Gone Girl, like it was just like so different than anything you'd read, read before. And it was like such a surprising plot twist, at least to me it was. I don't know if it would have been different if I read it versus listen. I think maybe sometimes the audiobook isn't as. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I have one more comment. <laughs> the part that bothered me the most in this entire book. I love this. Lay it on I, Did you pick I, the second to read it? No, I didn't bring my book. <laughs> um, but uh, the part where I was just like, come on, is when Aiden goes to see the daughter at the dorm room. And her first reaction is like, I'm going to send a selfie to my mom. Yeah. Not like yeah. post on Snapchat, send right. it to my best friends. Like my mom definitely wants to see this creepy guy that I just brought back to my dorm room because I definitely didn't have sex with him. Who's at like, least 10 years older than me. Who has a relationship like that with their mothers? Yeah. I don't know. That's, I just, yeah. Done. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I agree. I found so many of the things that happened. I was like saying to myself, like, no one would do that. Like, that's not, I mean, it didn't seem to make that much sense. I had one of those moments when he followed her to the restaurant and it was like, there was like one throwaway line that was like, Caroline had let enough hints out that he knew yeah, which right. restaurant. I'm like, you know, which Italian yeah. restaurant in New York City yeah. to go wait for her at? Like, no way. Yeah, I thought the same thing. No I way. remember that part. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, definitely some issues. I like, I, I agree with literally everything you've all said and I still liked it. Yeah, part so, of it was like, it was freaking storming out the entire time I was reading yeah. the book. So it'd be like, oh, it was like crashing thunder and I was like, <laughs> reading about like the storm and stuff. I don't know, I liked it. It, awesome. it was a beach read. Like, yeah, yeah. This is something you take on vacation, you read it on the plane, you read it on the beach. It's like you're done with it in a couple of days and it's fun. <laughs> I'll give you that. But, I don't ever need to read another Michelle Campbell. Well, also I felt like it says Michelle Campbell, best-selling author of It's Always a Husband, which gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. That's funny. I didn't even realize that. Like this yeah. book would be an amazing Lifetime movie. If they don't already have the right, oh, sure. then yeah. it's on the way. Best-selling author of I Only Write Books Where the Husband Did It. Yeah, the twist thing, the like twist is on the cover. Um, <clears throat> I'm almost hesitant to ask this because I feel like this book is so bad that it doesn't have any. But what are the themes of this book? Family. Deception. Greed. We have family, greed. Ooh, greed. Class. Yeah. Jealousy. What'd you say, Carrie? Uh, jealousy. Yeah, obsession. I mean, sexism, I think. Like, to me, like, obsession with men and women is like, it's like, well, of course they love me. I don't know. That's my Yeah, I think those are all really good. I really like greed. I feel like that's kind of at the heart of all of it, right? Just like the greediness of these people that, like, the beach house isn't enough. Like, the money isn't enough. What they have isn't enough. Like, their daughter isn't enough. She's like more, 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 more. Yeah, and like she's like less important than getting money. Like, oh, I'm just gonna bounce and stay in like a my sister's husband's like business for weeks on end or however long it was. I don't know. I could be exaggerating, but like, and my daughter is like suffering, thinking that you know I'm innocent and all this stuff. It's, it's just I thought it was weird, but I mean that's the theme of it. That's I guess that's the greed thing. Yeah, I Emily, I have that as a question too. I thought the daughter piece of it was a real loose end. Like, so the daughter was not in on it. She really thought her dad died. That's <laughs> yeah, up. everyone thought he died, and that that didn't yeah. make any sense to me. Yeah. So that for me was kind of. I mean, I guess it was like, oh well, she's taken care of because she's like with the aunt who she has a great relationship with, which they told us over and over again. But I still felt like they wouldn't just abandon the daughter. Like, what was the long term plan? There? I was more wrapped up even before that on the fact that, and then the audio book made Hannah sound like just your worst nightmare. Like, Mom, yeah, yeah, it did. why are you doing this to oh me? Oh my God, you're stubborn. Oh my gosh. And you'd be like, I don't even talk to you. Right? But like the way she was talking to her mom when her mom's like, I didn't want to do that type of parenting, but I was like, your dad cheated on me. Like, first of all, what a little bitch to be like, no, he didn't. You're exaggerating. Why are you saying this? Like, just like, I hated her. <laughs> Hello, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of the Producing While Asian podcast. Join us to listen in on conversations with everyone who identify from producers to non-producers who all are part of the AAPI community. There's all that and more on the Producing While Asian podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Okay, so this will be fun. Let's read our first sentence. Does anyone remember it? <laughs> yeah, there was a stranger on the beach. <laughs> there was a stranger on the beach. Let's do it. I made me laugh because I thought about you reading the first sentence every time. I'm like, that's so funny. Yeah, there was a stranger on the beach. Really, really gets to the point, huh? What do you, what do you guys think of that? These cookies are amazing. These are, well, the cookies are amazing. How are you guys? 
We got all the treats over here. I thought that the uh, stranger on the beach, like, I kind of felt like she had picked the title for the book and then, like, had to go, like, force it in. Because, like, I, when you think about all that happened, it's like, oh, I guess he was a stranger on the beach that she saw that one time. Yeah. But, like, it's not, like, it didn't seem like a recurring theme. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. When she recruited him, like, he wasn't really a stranger. I mean, she didn't know yeah. him well, but she knew him well enough to know that she could manipulate him. So... I mean, starting the book that way, I guess I could see how it made sense. So you would think that there was no existing connection. And then the last line, I feel like when she's like, oh, they like were strangers again or something like that. Oh, yeah. It was, I felt, I totally agree with you, Maggie. I feel like it was really forced. I feel like she wrote this whole book and then she's like, oh, that has nothing to do okay, with the title. Like I have to like reference this. I forgot about that. That was the last line. Yeah, I would have thought the first sentence was mysterious and intriguing if I hadn't just read the exact same words uh, as the title on the cover. I felt like the ends of all the early chapters too. She was like, "I would have been okay, except I wasn't." Yeah. Like, <laughs> These fake cliffhangers that they are were really so cliffhangers. Intense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were super intense cliffhangers. Oh, I yeah. forgot about that. I do love though, like. Someone said this. It is like the suspended, like disbelief. Yeah. Like I did kind of like the gravitas of like that kind of stuff in here. Like it was so silly, but it was really fun. And like it was, it was all exaggerated, and it was just like very moody. Like characters fall in love immediately, and like they really care about each other, and this heavy and like I kind of was into it. I was into. I thought at the beginning, I thought the book was going to be literally a comment on men who were like obsessed on women. And I thought the whole book was going to be his interpretation of their interactions, yeah. how he believed that she was in love with him and she wasn't. So I kind of almost would have, I, I think it's preachy, but I almost would have preferred if it was like a study on guys who like become obsessive compulsive about a woman. Cause I think that that exists way more than we maybe talk about. Yeah. Well, even too, just like the different interpretations of the same, from a man's point of view and a woman's point of view like yeah there's a lot in the cave. Cave. Yeah, like, the, yeah the part in the cave when she was basically feeling like she was being assaulted and he was like oh she looked at me and she loved me and she wanted me to touch her and she, yeah and it was just like wow these two people can think such different things about the same situation i kind of liked that back and forth at the beginning but then that disappeared yeah Okay, Beth, this question is for you. Yeah, yeah. Page 53, what do you think of the sex scene? <laughs> okay, my, my friend Catherine here doesn't know this, um, but uh, yeah, typically I get way too drunk at book club and read the sex scenes. Um, but I drove here today, so I can't drink that much. But uh, you know what? I, I thought it was kind of hot. I was like, all right, like, no. I mean, I so you don't remember? It so they funny. did it in the shower. They did it more than once. The one thing I got a little bit worried for her, though, I was like, I'm 34, and if I drink too much, like, it's the end of the night. And she was, like, wasted and still, like, had very, like, good sex. Yeah. Which I'm, like, highly unrealistic. I, that's very unrealistic to me. Like, I would have been barfing everywhere. Like, it would have been nasty. He would have been like, please take a shower first. I don't know. But how, about the, how about the part where they uh, said that they did every single position that you could think of? I, and then I started like, because that's the kind of person I am being like, okay, well, what, because okay, so they did this one. And then I started envisioning it. And then I was like, well, geez, like, and then I started thinking just like medically, like that has to get uncomfortable after a certain period of time. There's like, because they did it until he went raw. Yeah, like that but word. Also, then they had sex after that. So, like, I'm just concerned for the skin yeah. health on the <laughs> Did Caroline fill in her husband on like all of these details? Like, in order for the plan to work, maybe they could have just like had sex a few rounds, <laughs> not like twenty <laughs> rounds, you know? or like she like, had three orgasms in in the night, and I was like. And then three orgasms in the morning. And I was like, geez. geez. Really Caroline's me. really taken one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. 
it was so um, it was so unnecessary Especially yeah the- i found it cringeworthy some parts to me felt like really forceful where i found myself like actually cringing and being like oh thank you <laughs> yeah but maybe she wanted to be dominated so to each their own you guys like the the wizard sex in that other book better Elf sex. Elf sex. Oh oh <laughs> wait when you do that brooks it just sounds like you're like trying to mimic sex sounds oh really i just was getting the book that's what I thought you were doing. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's such a good point. Well, I mean, I guess like her whole thing was like making it believable, right? So she like needed this guy to fall in love with her actually in order to get him to do what she wanted him to do. Like it was part of the manipulation. I feel like he he was into her already, but yeah. like that just put the cherry on top. He yeah. was like, "Oh, she wants to bang like ten times a day. Great." Right. I just got out of prison. Yeah. I'm so horny. Even though he's like a she, hot she's person, feeling right? like her husband has a mistress, and so she's gotta like get revenge. Yeah. How much younger was he than her? Sixteen like, years. Yeah. Nice. It was like the same age as like between him and the daughter. Yeah, then, almost. You like, when he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be her father-in-law." I was like, "What? No, her yeah. stepfather." Like, I was like, "Cool." Yeah. Was anyone else casting the movie in their head? Yes, Nick. You took the words right out of my mouth. So I was going with Jennifer Aniston, or like she's kind of the yes, right yes, age. Yes. She's attractive. So right? See, I was gonna go either her or um, Charisse Theron. Ooh, oh, she oh, yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. But also, she I thought being she evil. Yeah. Who? She always plays those like hoity-toity, like I wear all beige, like <laughs> you know, like cashmere mom things. Mm-hmm. Laura Dern could be the sister. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think she's trashy enough. I right? Think could be. She I, know, I, think think be. I think she can do anything, actually. She's yeah. True. Who would be Aiden? That was, I had trouble with that. I don't know who, like, the young actors are now, but yeah. I, like, is Robert Pattinson a little too old? He's kind of got the fan. No, Robert Pattinson. Like, he's got the That'd be a good one. He's not uh, what, what about, like, you know? what about um, the guy from that show, You? He's kind of, like, creepy, dark hair. Uh, um, badly. Yeah. Just go, Zac Efron. Just go straight to Zach Efron. Zach Efron. <laughs> oh, Zach Efron. Yeah. Yeah. Who's I'm that? into Zach Efron. He's hot. He's so hot. Child of Bush. Child of Bush. Oh, God. No, he's not hot enough. <laughs> no. But he looks like he looks like he's been to prison though. Yep. Trash panda. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he's like wearing a leather jacket.
<laughs> well, but you take it all the money. Um, but I feel like you don't just get over that. Like if your husband cheats on you really visibly in front of everyone you know, and then drains all your bank accounts, like you don't, that's not a 15 minute conversation outside of a restaurant. Well, she was right. super, or we think she was like obsessed with how she looked to everybody, which I know people like that. My mom is kind of like that. Like she would, my mom would rather like do like, like, weird illegal shit than like look bad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like she was so obsessed with like nobody can know that I slept with this yeah, guy. Of course, none of it. Image. Yeah. Yeah. So for her, I think she would do anything to be with her husband because that's the normal thing, right? Yeah. I just felt like it was missing. Like we needed a few paragraphs in there at least to tell us something about what had happened in the reconciliation. Wait. So if it was a ruse the whole time. Why, why even like manufacture that they get back together? You know, like they were, okay, so they like separated. I guess I, I'm confused. Cause then she kind of knew about all this like Russian mobster stuff the whole time, right? She did. Cause I, so, I think she was trying to fuel Aiden, right? Like. Oh, I see. Oh, like, as motive. And he'd be like, well, he's bad for you. Don't you see this? Like, I want to protect you. I want to take care of you. Keep yeah. you away from your husband and that like fueled his fire. Yeah, I think they had to build up the like jealousy storyline. And also I think she didn't want to be a suspect in his murder, so they couldn't be estranged. You know yes, I mean? okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we've been through a rough patch in our marriage, but we were working on it, we were back together. I didn't kill him. Get it. I got it. Also, I'm just thinking about this now, but time all of this in a hurricane <laughs> right was that the purpose oh, yeah. or would they have gone through it storm or no storm that's a good point bro. yeah i hadn't thought about that before would they have still killed him if it was a calm night okay page 120 i marked because oh this was the first time so we had started getting some kind of like little inconsistencies in the two narrations and this was the first one that made me be like hang on what and kind of double check and it was the head thing and so he says he leaves her a voicemail and says i followed him your husband the bastard got wise to it and slugged me that's why my head was cut up last night did he say anything to you give me a call that was the first big difference that i noticed where i was like okay somebody's lying who is it did he hit his head on the dashboard or did the husband punch him so that's when i started to get really like okay what, who's, who's truthful yeah. like what yeah I got that way in particular once um the whole like her spending the night at his apartment it just got like the stories were completely different like apparently like his version was they slept together in the bed and they cuddled and yada yada she asked him to kill her husband but like that's not how she said it yeah, i started to get the impression that he was like crazy and like seeing things and hearing things same that's what i thought so she invented the gun and like pinned it all on him or she put it there no i i got the impression the gun didn't come out until the night he got shot so when she said in the in her chapter, I saw a silver gun in the drawer of the nightstand or whatever, she was just lying. lying. Yeah. She was trying to place the gun on him. Also, when she touches it, people in movies are always touching guns. Yeah. If I got a gun, I'd be like, like, okay, yeah. I'm never touching it. Yes. Like, and people in movies are always like, oh, look, a gun. Well, I wonder if it's loaded. <laughs> Let me lick it for a while. Yeah. Like, it's so dumb. She finds a gun in his apartment, she picks it up. No, you would not. I can just right. I mean, some people are dumb. Yeah, it's like <laughs> glinting in the, the, the light in this dirty hotel room. Yes. <laughs> So who were you guys more apt to believe, like story-wise? I believed her yeah. for a long time. And then I like mm -hmm. I thought that I forgot when I thought it was sketchy. But I just like had a feeling because I read books like this a lot. And I was like, I think that I think that they're making her story a little too believable and his a little too unbelievable. Agreed. The majority of people her on her team probably maybe half of it yeah team Sorry, caroline a couple points in this book where i thought wait is she 
what if she turns out to be the liar? Yep, same. And I didn't, like, I was convinced otherwise, like, for a couple chapters. Like, no, 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 she's... So that, to me, was very fun, because, like, I did have a couple moments where I was like, no, I don't really know, like... Yeah, like maybe she had a psychological issue and like was hallucinating some of these things, but that was clearly not the case. Yeah, I felt like I was reconvinced it wasn't her during the like confession part in the police station, and then they lead her out and he kind of attacks her. Yeah, like I I was at that point kind of like, okay, maybe she isn't the mastermind, and maybe she's also getting you know by powers outside of her. Like she did seem really innocent at that point. Also, the part when she um disappears, yeah. I was like, okay, she's super guilty now. Like, why would you disappear? Same. Like this guy killed your husband, and you're not gonna like testify against him. Also, like, what was their plan? Why didn't they were just gonna live at her sister-in-law's husband's trucking facility? Like, what? Yeah, I think we need a sequel. And there's two lines in there like, well, I had a hot plate. Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, well, hot plate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on page 133, Caroline goes to the police and, like, to try to tell them that Aiden is stalking her. And I just wanted to talk about, it, like, how realistic do you think? Obviously, this experience, we don't really know if this actually happened, I guess. This yeah, she came through a soul cycle class. Or she could have gone and done this. Like, how realistic was the police response to this? Do you guys think? Realistic. They basically tell her like we can't do anything. Yep. I I've like that experienced was real. that. Yeah, I've experienced that firsthand where they're like, unless there's like a real specific threat, they like they're like, sorry. Yeah, I kind of thought that too. It like, seems accurate to me, but if the whole point of going to the police was to create a record that he's stalking you, you're lying about it anyway. Just say yeah, he threatened me, right? Right. Just lie. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, so, um, there hasn't been any actual violence uh, yet. I'm worried there might be. So far, it's just stalking. Maybe but then she, maybe they'd like go arrest him and right. she, she didn't want that. Yeah, I think that she was really smart and she just wanted to have a sort of like un uh, solidified like precedent that she had complained verbally so that they would like maybe know. Well, we didn't take anything down, but she did complain about this, like to give it history or something. Yeah. Well, I tried, but the police wouldn't do anything. But literally, like, any any of my, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, be super weird or anything, but any time I've gone to the police for anything, they've said there's nothing they can do. Like, <laughs> I literally, like, had my bike stolen in a very specific time, in a very specific place, and, like, there's nothing they can do. Like, I don't, it, yeah. It's so, good, like, none of that really surprised me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when did you guys figure it out? Did anybody, did anybody not figure it out and was totally surprised by the twist at the end? Wow. I never see any twist. Okay, cool. I consider myself a smart person, but I never see any twists coming, and I'm always like, ooh, you know, my only flaw. But, yeah, I was surprised. Okay, so everybody else figured it out. So when, do you know when you figured it out? I just thought it was too weird that they couldn't find a body. And then when the, when the neighbor said that she saw three people yes, walking. that was it for me. That was when I was like, Oh, okay. oh yeah. 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 When she said she saw yeah. three, two people carrying another person, I was like, it was. Yeah, so what, do you, what do we think they were doing in real life? Like, I don't know. I don't know what that meant. Meg asked me, and I was like, I actually don't know why there were three people carrying another person. Well, so it was the husband and Caroline, basically Caroline, carrying Aiden. Aiden. Because well, because he was passed out on Ambien. Yeah, and so they, they put him in his truck. They drove him to like the beach or wherever they were okay. in, in the body of this young man. And then they skedaddled and he woke up and his truck covered in blood. Got it. Okay. Also, when they'd say that part, they like connected how many cars were there. So they were like, I forget how they said it, but they were like, if Tommy was there and Aiden were there, you know, like, and then they were talking about the third person. They were like the third person in the way that they were driving. That's when I figured it out. Yeah. Cause there was no, like the police car was what do you guess about the police chief for letting him go? He loved his little brother, that's for sure. Yeah, for it sure. was kind of sweet. I know. I I wanted to actually not like Tommy because he seemed like 
this big boisterous police chief oh, yeah. that like comes and gets free drinks at the bar from his brother, the bartender, and like regales all these like heroic stories. But then it turned out that he was actually like a decent guy and I liked him. I have a question. Do you guys think that Aiden, like, it's his fault that that guy died, that his friend Mike or whatever died, or not Mike, the oh. other kid? Like, do you think that, do you, do you believe Aiden that he was in self defense and he hit the friend and the friend hit the rock? Or, like, do you think that. So Yeah. I believe him. I feel like really, really unfortunate bad luck things like that happen yeah i believe him and i feel like at the end of the story aiden's like a believable person right yeah like he, he ends up being like the protagonist of the story more or less but he's you know? psychopath but yeah he, he was like obsessed with her like made a lot of really bad choices so he's like a believable psychopath <laughs> yeah i believe that it was an accident but i also think he was shitty because he never really took responsibility for it like if I made choices that resulted in the death of my best friend, I would never forgive myself. Like, I would be, even if it was an accident, like, I would still consider it my fault. I don't know. Like, he was, like, really, like, whiny. Like, my life got ruined by this. And I, I was just, everything's bad. It's like, well, I mean, you got into a fight with someone and he died. Like, yeah. Even if you didn't intend for him to die, right. he still died. Like, it was still, like, these are the consequences of your actions. You have to live with them now. And he was like, didn't want to have that, which I felt like. I felt like this book was, there's not a lot to dig into. Am I wrong? No. There's not like. Because it's plot. It's plot, 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 plot. plot. Exactly. There's no like character development. There's yeah. no like literary quality. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Then this happened. Yeah. So it's like, which is fun to read, but just. It, did, it didn't seem that different to me from like the Harlan Coben book we read. Like, Maybe it's just mysteries of the genre, or thrillers, or whatever. Like, well, you read a lot of that stuff. Books with Brooks is produced by Mo Barrow with theme music by Jonathan Allen. Books with Brooks is part of the Press Play Podcast Network, which empowers hosts to create high quality professional shows that inspire and entertain. If you've been dreaming of hosting your own podcast, we can help. Please email content at pressplaypodcast.com to get started today. Please be sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes wherever you listen to podcasts.